Friday evening. Weather for Weather Geeks time. We'll make it a quick one this evening with nothing real exciting happening weather-wise over the next several days. But of course, we'll always find interesting things and geeky things to talk about on this video on this Friday evening. We had kind of a temperature bust today. <laughs> uh, the warmer air just never was able to make it too far to the north. So at the airport, we crawled up to 40 today. It was a struggle. And we got into the middle 40s in a lot of Mahoning and Columbiana County. But we really struggled in a lot of the area today. The, the warm air was not far to our south, but it just didn't quite make it in. As of about 7.13 this evening, I'll take a minute for all the radar data to load in here. Yeah, it's raining lightly. We do have some colors on the map this evening. The radar algorithm is trying to show some sleet and even some freezing rain in parts of Trumbull and Mercer County, but uh, we know from uh, what the actual temperatures are that uh, we're not getting any freezing rain this evening. It's all just a cold rain, but the radar algorithm is sometimes fooled a little bit. Mention those temperatures. It was a close call this afternoon. You know, it got well up into the 60s. In Charleston and Morgantown, pretty close to 50 in Pittsburgh, even as nearby as Carrollton, just one county over to the west of our viewing area, got up to 50 this afternoon, whereas East Liverpool was hardly better than 44 or 45 this afternoon. So it was a tough forecast today, and we ended up being just too warm. All right, Severe Weather Awareness Week is coming to an end here in the state of Ohio. Pennsylvania has their Severe Weather Awareness Week in a few weeks uh, during the middle of April. All week long, we've been talking about various aspects of severe weather, severe weather safety and awareness. And sometimes we talk about technical definitions. What is a severe thunderstorm? We're going to talk about hail some this evening. A severe thunderstorm does have a technical definition. It's either producing one inch in diameter hail, winds of 58 miles per hour or greater, or a tornado, or all three things. Um, but those, that's the criteria for a severe thunderstorm. When the National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm warning, it's either because they think one of these three, three things will come to fruition or one of those three things is happening right now. Um, and so, yeah, everything in weather kind of has a weird technical definition sometimes, including the size of hailstones and the speed in which a, a wind gust needs to reach for the uh, storm to technically be severe. Now, in our part of the country, when it comes to hail, we don't get a lot of real big hail. Typically, in eastern Ohio and western PA, we get hail kind of in this zone, from peas to quarters. Sometimes we'll get hail a little bit bigger, up to ping pong or golf ball size, but that's pretty rare. That might be a once a year type of a thing in our general region, eastern Ohio, western PA. Once you get out into western Ohio, it's a little more common to see some bigger hailstones, and certainly once you get out into the plain states and parts of the Gulf Coast, but especially the plain states, think Texas, think Oklahoma, that's where you can really see those gargantuan hail sizes. Why is that? Well, things just typically come together for bigger hailstones out there, you get more dry air aloft, and that can help form hailstones when you have a layer of pretty dry air aloft. Um, and so around here, a lot of times in our storm situations, the atmosphere is pretty moist from the ground up several thousand feet, and that kind of inhibits the formation of really big hailstones in our part of the country. But yeah, one inch in diameter is what we're generally looking for when it comes to uh, hailstones that meet that criteria for a severe thunderstorm. All right, so in the near term, it's going to rain all evening, and the rain will be with us through a good chunk of the night. Now, as the colder air starts filtering back in overnight, as the rain tapers off, could there be some snowflakes mixed in? A few sleet pellets? Yes. Uh, there might even be a brief period where it's technically freezing rain late tonight. It might be like right at 32 or maybe 31 and still technically raining or drizzling but that would be pretty low impact. At worst, we might see a little bit of a glaze on elevated surfaces, railings, maybe a few windshields, but that's worst at worst. The road should be just fine later on tonight. And so precipitation will probably wind down before sunrise. Tomorrow morning sunrise is about 7.30. I think we'll be drying things out at that point. We'll have the clouds for a lot of the morning, but by midday the sky will be brightening. Should be a pretty sunny finish to our Saturday. Crystal clear then, Saturday night into Sunday morning, and nothing but sunshine coming our way during the day on Sunday. And while Sunday will get off to a frigid start, not far from 20, I think we'll make a run into the middle and upper 40s before Sunday is through. Just some fair weather clouds then on Monday, and this warm front's a pretty strong one because this low pressure system out here is a pretty strong one. This will be another wintry uh, situation for areas near the U.S. Canadian border in the upper Midwest. But for us, we'll be firmly in the warm sector for a few days. I think we'll do 60 a couple of times Monday and into Tuesday. It'll stay kind of mild into uh, the latter portions of the week as well. Not as warm as it has been in March, but hey, we'll take the uh, you know 50s and lower 60s anytime over what we've had this week and what we'll have at the start of the weekend. Only 39 Saturday and 46 degrees on Sunday. But again, nothing but sunshine for Sunday afternoon. Quick word on the longer range, these maps cover the 6 to 10 day period, the 8 to 14 day period, and weeks 3 and 4. Temperatures are at the top, 
precipitation at the bottom. This is a pretty unremarkable pattern I think we're heading into at the end of March and the start of April. What I mean by that is I don't expect any extremes on the warm end or the cold end. I don't expect any extremes on the wet end or the dry end. Um, that being said, of course, all attention or all focus will be on what is currently weeks three and four because that's around the solar eclipse on April the 8th specifically. The weather forecast will be very important that day. What can we say about April the 8th here on March the 22nd? Not much in terms of specifics. I think we're about a week away from st that starting to come into focus. Uh, the specifics as far as precipitation chances, cloud cover, that sort of thing. I will say that this range we can probably say with some confidence that it will be a coolish kind of a pattern right around April the 8th. Whether it's cold, cold, it's too early to say, but I don't think it's going to be uh, one of those April days where we see 80 degrees like we can have sometimes in early April. That's the way things look right now, but late next week, next Thursday, next Friday, I think we'll be able to really start showing you some computer model information that, of course, even 10 or 12 days out, we're going to take all that information with a grain of salt, but we'll at least be able to show you some things that will uh, perhaps give us hints as to the overall uh, chances of actually being able to see this eclipse on April the 8th. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Friday evening. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here on Monday.